about some some shapes here. Um, so we have to list some characteristics of these figures. Um, so I'm just going to make like a list. Um, it may or might may not be the exact list you saw in class um, because depending on what teacher you had, it may be slightly different. But I'll just give you the most comprehensive list that I can think of. Um, and then if I it's a little bit more, hey, it's no big deal. Uh, if it's not enough, I'm just I'm sure your teacher can help you square that up. All right. Um, speaking of square, let's talk square. Um, so the first thing I want to do is actually just draw a square. Um, that might give us a sense of like what these properties actually end up being. Um, so when I think of a square, of course, I think of this four-sided shape. Um, by definition, it's got to have these four 90-degree angles and these four congruent side lengths. Um, now, as far as, as like the characteristics go, like once you get past the stuff for the definition, um, there's a couple other interesting things that happen. Um, one, you can kind of think of these diagonals here. Um, they end up being a 90 degree angle and they end up being um, congruent as well. Remember the square is a pinnacle shape so you can even say stuff like um, we have we have parallel lines here because technically it's also a parallelogram um, so this is pretty comprehensive let's start making some lists here um, so let's start with in the red and so the red first of all is that it's a quadrilateral Um, we have four right angles, and we have four congruent sides. Uh, let's move on to the purple stuff. Um, also true about a square um, is that you have congruent diagonals. You can also say that congruent the diagonals bisect one another. Um, the diagonals are perpendicular. Um, you can see they meet at that right angle in the middle. Um, you can also say, and this is one that's kind of hard to see, but uh, since all these angles are in a square and those, they're cutting those 90s, the diagonals actually bisect the angles. Um, so what I mean by that one is that these angles actually get cut into 45 degree angles all the way around. Um, last bit here, let's talk about the pink version. So let's say we have sets of parallel sides, and so I'll sneak that in right here. Um, we, can, we have this property that opposite sides are parallel. Um, so what you kind of seeing here is a building up of the shape too. It's like its most pinnacle thing. Opposite sides being parallel, we actually got that because it's also a parallelogram. Um, four congruent side lengths, we got that because it's also a rhombus. Um, congruent diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals are right angles. Diagonals bisect vertex angles. Those are all things that come from being also a rhombus and a kite and a trapezoid. Um, so you see a square actually has a lot of things going because, well, it's a pretty co complex shape. Um, let's go ahead and do the same thing now. We established kind of like a operating system pattern. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for rectangle. Um, so when I think about a rectangle, I start like this. We have four 90 degree angles that make that happen. And that's really what you need for the definition. Um, now, we do have diagonals here as well. They don't get the benefit of being a 90 degree angle or cutting the angles in half or anything, um, but they are going to be congruent. This part, uh, what is this? Pink, okay. Um, just like the square, it's also coming from parallelograms. So those are going to be 90 degree angles. Um, and since it's also a parallelogram, we can say these sides are congruent, opposite sides are congruent. Okay, um, so let's start writing it in. So as far as the red goes, uh, we know that gives us the quadrilateral. And four right angles. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that comes from just the definition. Um, let's talk about some diagonals. Um, so diagonals are congruent. And diagonals bisect one another.
pink. Now let's talk uh, let's see, let's put it in pink. Um, so we put in pink is that we have opposite sides parallel and congruent. Okay, let's go down to rhombus. Okay, so as far as what you need for the definition of a rhombus, um, we have four sides of course. All the sides are congruent. Now that's enough just for the definition. Um, there is some di cool stuff that happens with the diagonals, uh, namely that they do bisect one another, and they do so at a right angle. And uh, because this comes to the parallelogram family, we do have some parallel lines going on here. Okay, so let's see. We have a quadrilateral, uh, four congruent sides. Okay, so diagonals bisect one another. Okay, diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, and then moving on to the uh, pink sets, we have opposite sides are parallel and congruent. All right, uh, last one, trapezoid. Now, here's where it might get a little controversial because um, it depends on what definition um, you were kind of given to accept. Um, but when you're talking about a trapezoid, the big thing is those have got to be parallel. Um, now, whether you subscribe to the, they have to be only parallel or at least or many, it doesn't really matter definition-wise. That's got to be true. Um, now, as far as diagonals go, there's nothing really can say specifically about trapezoid diagonals. Um, it, this is like a isosceles trapezoid word business, but a general trapezoid. Um, there's nothing to diagonals other than they happen to be diagonals. Um, now, the other part about being parallel, well, that was part of the definition here. The other side may or may not be parallel. That doesn't really matter. And so we don't really have many um, properties to this one. It is a quadrilateral. And you can say that opposite sides are, uh, you have opposites. And I'll leave it pretty ambiguous here. Um, you have one set of opposite parallel sides. Now, whether you subscribe to, like, that's the only set it can be or not, um, that's just the case. Okay, so those are those are nice set of characteristics for all all those shapes. Um, let's go down to this question now. Um, the figure ABCD below is a square. What we have to show to prove that ABCD is a square? Let me explain how you know you're correct. Well, um, what they're asking us to write here is a statement of intent. Um, so let's just write it. Um, so if you think about the definition of a square, um, that's really what they're asking you to identify here. Like, what does it actually take to be a square? Um, so let's write a statement of intent. Okay, I will show A, B, C, D is a square. Now let's tell let's tell the reader exactly what we're going to do uh, by showing all sides are congruent. Uh, we should also mention how we're going to do it. So all sides are going to do it by using the, the distance formula. Now the other part of the definition is that all angles have to be congruent. I'm sorry, all angles are perpendicular. Um, and we're going to use it by calculating the slope. Now the que a question also asks us here to explain how we know we're correct. And so what they want us to do here is just tell them like what we're looking for. Um, so when I use a distance formula, what am I looking for? When I use a slope formula, what am I looking for? Um, so let's continue.
Okay, um, so let me zoom back out so maybe that's a little easier to read. Um, got kind of small there. Um, so what we want to do in the statement of intent is just to tell the reader what you plan to do, how you plan to do it, and what you're looking for after you do that, whatever calculation you're going to do. Um, so what this says, I will show ABCD as a square by showing all the sides are congruent by using the distance formula, and all angles are perpendicular by calculating the slope. I know I'm correct if all the side distances are the same, that's what needs to be congruent, and that all the slopes are opposite reciprocals because that's the definition of um, uh, that's that'd be the definition of perpendicular. And so now we have to pro prove ABCD is a square, show unnecessary work. Um, so this is actually going to be a two-part kind of problem. It's actually going to be a lot of work to do here. Um, so one thing I'm going to do right off the bat is establish like the actual de the calculation, like the formula we're going to need. Um, so I said the distance formula and the slope, and calculating the slope. And so the distance formula D, remember it's a derivation of this distance formula, or the Pythagorean theorem. And so the distance formula is defined to be um, the change in your x's squared plus the change in your y's squared. Now you might have seen it worked out as like a full uh, calculation. And so we were maybe look at something like this where you have like x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which is ultimately what I just wrote up there. I just wrote it out as all the pieces. Uh, the other formula we're going to use is the slope formula. And so remember, slopes defined to be rise over run which is the same thing as change in y over change in x, or if you want to see it as the actual calculation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you look at all these formulas, it tells us we're going to have to actually get some coordinates uh, to make this work. So let's find these coordinates over here um, and then record them. Um, so let's see, the first coordinate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, and then the second coordinate is going to be, oh, I'm sorry, 0, 8. So B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be 6, 6. Uh, C is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be 4, 0. And then D is going to be negative 2, 2. Um, so we're going to need those to find distances. Um, now, the one thing you don't want to do is just come over here and like, do all your counting and stuff on this grid and call that work. Um, you're going to have to perform a calculation. So you, if you want to count out all these just so in your head, you know that those are actually the right slopes, the right distances, you can. But you're going to have to show a calculation. Like There's no way around it. You're just going to have to do it. Um, so let's just do this. Um, so let's find maybe the distances first. And so let's find AB uh, first. Okay. Um, so AB, the... Here, let's... Uh, Okay, so A goes from 0, 8 um, to 6, 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that distance uh, using the distance formula. I'm going to use a little shortcut version of it. I'm not going to go through like all the substitution and stuff. Uh, you guys can do that if you'd like. Uh, but for the key and really how you could be using distance formula, you don't need to. Um, so distance formula is defined to be the change in x uh, squared plus the change in y squared. Well, my x's go from 0 to 6. That's the difference of 6. Square it, you get 36. Um, y, my y's go from 8 down to 6. That's a difference of 2. Square it, you get 4. And so this distance ends up being the square root of 40. Um, I don't even have to like, uh, I don't even have to bother to even simplify that because I can compare the other ones the same exact way. Um, so that was AB. Let's find uh, BC now. Uh, so B goes from 6, 6. Let's, let's go ahead and borrow this guy. So B goes from 6, 6, and then C is right here, goes from 0, 4. Okay. Um, let's do the same kind of thing. I'm using a distance formula. Um, so my X's go from 6 to 4. Uh, that's the difference of 2. Square E get 4. My Y's go from 6 to 0. That's the difference of negative 6. So when you square it, you get 36. So that distance is going to be square root of 40 as well. Uh, next one goes from C to D. Uh, 
something uh, so C was a four zero so let's go ahead and borrow this guy okay so CD goes from four zero to D goes from negative two to two okay so to find that distance goes from four to negative two that's the difference of six squared you get 36 um, the y's go from zero to two difference of four uh, square distance of four, so that's going to be square root of 40 as well. As you can see, all the distances are actually working out. Uh, last one we have to check is AD. Um, so A is 0, 8, and D is negative 2, 2. Okay, nice. So the distance formula again change in y squared, change in x squared, change in x squared. A change in x, excuse me, is 2 squared, you get 4. Um, D goes from 8 to 2, that's a difference of 6, so squared, you get 36. And so this distance is also going to be squared of 40. Um, so that right there proves that all the sides are the same, so we've got, we've worked it up to now a rhombus. Um, what we have to do now is actually check the slope. Um, so we have to check actually the slope formula. Um, so let's check the slope of AB. Um, and at the same time, let's check DC. Um, so remember, the slopes um, are uh, rise over run. And so AB has to go down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so the slope of AB is going to be 2 over 6, excuse me, negative 2 over 6. DC, um, you can see, it goes down 2 and then over 6 again. So that slope is going to be negative 2 over 6. Um, so those are going to be uh, parallel, which we expected. Um, let's check AB, I'm sorry, AD as in dog, and uh, BC. So from D to A, we go over 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So AD is going to be 6 over 2. Uh, C to B, let's see, we go up 1, 6, 2, so... BC is going to be up 6 over 2 as well. And I'm just counting on the grid there. Um, now, this checks out immediately because we see they're opposite reciprocals. We expected them to be, and they are. Um, so 2, 6 to 6, 2, we flip the negated. And again, we see that for DC and BC. Uh, so we do have uh, opposite reciprocals. If you look at our statement of intent, they said, I said as soon as we found that all the side distances were the same, uh, which I did right here, in the red, and then all the slopes have, were opposite reciprocals, which I did right here by looking at all four slopes. Um, we we're good to go. So that proves that this is a square. It's a lot of work, but guys, there's no way around it. You got to show all the pieces. Um, so I think what's that? Uh, part six. I'll see you guys in part seven.